Scarlet and Violet is two months away, and post-rotation is two months away, and, but everyone's itching to find out what cards are going to be good, what decks are going to be good, what should I be buying now so that I can be ready when rotation happens. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Rahul, and today we're going to look at some of these new decks over in Japan where rotation has already happened, and they are already playing with the Scarlet and Violet cards, and all of D-Block is already rotated. If you want to find out what cards and what decks still stay good with rotation happening, you can find a video up somewhere here. I'll drop a card for it up top. But we're going to be looking at some of these newer decks because every time rotation happens, some cards that people might have discounted as really bad end up becoming good because certain things change. Now, what do I mean by that? Dark Rai V-Star, for example, has been rising in popularity over in Japan, and right now it's about a dollar. So when this card actually becomes good, it's going to jump to three or four dollars. So don't be caught slacking, lacking, whatever, you know, and pick up your copies now. So today we're going to look at some of, there are two Japanese Twitter accounts, Pokeka Mechi and Pokeka Book, um, that I guess post results from like local tournaments in Japan. Um, and I know they're very credible sources. They've been, you know, posting stuff for years. Uh, for a lot of, a long time, it was very difficult to get information from Japan because they were not very prevalent on social media, uh, besides like some of their top players. But we're blessed to have these resources now. Um, they have a big tournament coming up at the end of February that will also tell us a lot of information. But let's jump to the chase about a month early. So we're going to look at some of these. Uh, we're just going to go through their media. I think it's the best way to look at it. Um, and just look at some of these lusts that have been doing well. I think this is a starter deck uh, for all intents and purposes, so I wouldn't really take any consideration to this, but NTV, and I'll kind of give you my thoughts on some of these decks. So here is, like, I think a local tournament that happened um, with about 12 people, looks like. And the interesting card here that I would note to pick up is the the Gardevoir. So now, by now, if you haven't noticed, Curlia seems to have become very, very popular because it has the ability that lets you discard a card from your hand and draw two. A very, very good ability in the Pokemon trading card game. We've seen that on Zorak GX, which dominated the format. Obviously, it doesn't have an insane attack, but it has a ton of good Gardevoirs and Gallade that it can evolve into, giving it this opportunity. We see this really interesting deck revolving around using uh, Gardevoir, which lets you look at the top three cards. I think draw all cards there, but attach energy first, like basic energy. So you can power up things like your Kyogre very quickly, and your, your Greninja, and you're like a Palkia deck in the early game, and then you can use Greninja multiple times, you can use your Gardevoir at the end of the game with Recyclers, and you can just like blow up a board all of a sudden. It has one copy of Klefki, which I think is really strong, but this is an idea and a concept you guys should be keeping an eye on. And also we have <clears throat> Archeops, I guess this is just an Archeops build, but Lugia can also be played in this Omastar slot. I don't. I wouldn't put too much stock in Omastar, not gonna lie. But the single strike cards, I think, are very good moving forward because they are one of the only few cards that still have like rainbow energies that also have a great effect. Like, yes, that the rap rapid strike cards have them as well, but I think the single strike cards are significantly better because Archeops can pull out these single strike energies, power up your Umbreons, your your um, Urshifus, and these these cards like one shot pretty much everything in the game still, and it's not too much of a commitment, and also Umbreon acts as a gusting effect. So these things are very important to keep in mind as you're looking at newer cards, so we see these single strike cards as well. Mew stays, Mew stays, Mew. The deck doesn't get any really different. It's starting to play like Feather Balls and stuff. Um, I'm sure Feather Balls, Great Balls, Nest Balls, all very interchangeable in these slots. Like, I wouldn't put too much stock into Mew. And then we see M Mouse Hold. I don't know if this deck is actually good. It's kind of funny that Lugia is adapting to try to do some new things, especially with losing a lot of the special energy that made it so good. We see weird versions of Lost Box as well. I wouldn't put too much stock into this either, but I think the, the key takeaway from this is that the Strike cards are very, very good. Um, and Halucha becomes a replacement for Zigzagoon. We don't have the card just yet. It just pings two things on the bench for one damage each, but there's no scoop up net to reuse it, obviously. So it's just a late game closer. Um, and we see Drapion's making its way into decks as well. Um, yeah. Uh, we're just gonna, you know, scroll through a couple, see if there's any fun decks in here. Uh, the Gardevoir line once again making its appearance. Uh, just, you know, pick that up. Uh, Arceus will stay good for its entire lifetime, I think, obviously. Galarian Moltres should be a card that you guys already have. Uh, it was good for a very long time. Um, same with, you know, these are just Arceus builds, it looks like, um, as a whole. Lost Box has a bunch of new takes. Lost Box is, you know, this is the version we've seen a lot of in the past. Just stock standard good down the board. This is the version that's been doing very well recently with um, Dragonite and all these, like, really good cards. Uh, so it's it's 
you know, uh, just a normal list. We see Spite Ops. Uh, I don't really believe in this deck just yet, but if you are a believer and want to pick up Leafeon, Leafeon VMAXs, and Leafeon Stars for however cheap they may be, this may be your opportunity to pick them up. I'm not a believer in Spite Ops just yet, but Leafeon does seem like a card that would work very well with this combination of cards. Um, yeah, so if you're a Spite Ops guy, it seems like a Spite Ops time. That Pokemon terrifies me, for those of you who didn't know. Uh, I would pick up Flaffies and um, <clears throat> Raichus as well. Uh, you don't need to pick up just one Raichu. I'd pick up like two or three. Also, I'm going to do an in-depth buy list, like post-rotation video once I, I have some time to sit down and do some research because this one will take a little bit of time. But I do think Lightning-type box is very good with Maridon as well as having Ampharos at the top end. Um, so Flaffy box style decks will get very good. I'm not a firm believer in this fighting style uh, toolbox deck with Coridon, so I wouldn't put stock into it yet. Um, but if you can pick up like... I guess there's Arcanine for cheap, which is probably should be like a couple cents. I would do it. Uh, Zorak V-Star is also an interesting one because I think it could be really good. But I also feel like the problem with Zorak V-Star was not the damage output at any given point. It was the fact that you draw these cards in the wrong order and all of a sudden your game plan is just like in shambles. And that could still happen with the current iteration of Zorak V-Star and the new iteration of Zorak V-Star. So I don't really believe in Zorak V-Star. But if you want to invest in that as well, that is something you can do. Um, I do have my Zorak V-Star cards, so I guess I am... Speaking from a point of, I've already purchased these cards. Um, again, we see the strike cards doing very well. Pick up your Stone Journers, your Deoxys's. There's a more Peko as well, as well I believe, is a single strike. Um, and then for Rapid Strike, I would just pick up like I, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't pick up Gengars. But for like Rapid Strike, I would pick up um, like Octillery Line, that kind of stuff. And then the Tyranitar, I think, could also be really good. Tyranitar and the um, Golurk are both single strike V Pokemon that are cheap and easy to pick up. Uh, the Celebration Zacian, if you don't have those. Um, yeah, some of these cards, I'm just, I'm just kind of giving you guys a quick glance at what I think you should be picking up. Tina cards, um, Giratina I think is very, very strong in Japan. It's been having very good results. Heatran VMAX is not something I'd put some stock into. Uh, yeah. I, I also wouldn't pick up Zeraora. I thought about this a lot and I'm like, mm, I don't think so. But I think Urshifu could be really, really good um, with Melanie or something of that nature. Uh, but I, I wouldn't put stock into all that, all that other jazz. Um... Magnezone V-Star is also showing some popularity in Japan, but I think as a Lightning Toolbox deck, you'd rather play just like heavier Maridon and other stuff like single prizers, maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe this card is good, I don't I don't know. You could invest in it, I probably will not myself. But yeah, and we see some Lost Box decks. This is just still old format, so I think this is where, this is where like uh, Poka Kameshi's uh, expertise ends, really. They've only had a couple of lists posted, but we, we're going to have a lot of big tournaments coming up soon um, with... Uh, rotation in japan and we'll see more results like we see a little Volpex doing well over there we see uh, i wouldn't put stock into that either um or this stack i don't know i wouldn't flip coin see there's a golik like i mentioned to you guys earlier um yeah so let's look at pokeka books see if they have anything special as well to talk about here um they, there's a couple of lists that are floating from like local tournaments like oink alone um and again the same list that did we saw earlier the palkia galade or Gir Pal palkia gardevoir gardevoir deck um, we see Guja taking a new form with the Tatsugiri to accelerate the energies out of the deck, uh, which is interesting as well, because we saw Tatsugiri Don Dozo already. Samrot is seeing some play. That should not be too, too pricey. Arc Drowlon is still seeing play. It should not be too pricey either. Um, like some of these decks, you just want to like pick up these V Pokemon while they're pennies effectively, because if they ever become good, I think you'll kick yourself for not like spending 20 cents to pick up some of these Vs and then have to spend like a dollar or two dollars down the line. Um, yeah, here's the Aichi CL that's going to be happening on the 25th and 26th. I won't be home to cover it, but this channel we will be covering some of those videos after, um, like finals, maybe some of the bigger matches. Uh, so we will, we will be here on this channel, making sure you guys get up to date on all that stuff. Um, yeah, Heatran VMAX, I still don't, like, I, we saw it twice now. Still don't believe in it very much. I think it's, it's a sham. I'm not a big, I'm not a big believer in the Heatran. Uh, we see Glaceon. There's a couple of Glaceons I've seen, actually. Glaceons, Leafeons, um, and Umbreon are, I think, are the three big Eons. I also think, like, Sylveon VMAX as a deck could be really good because the deck doesn't really lose anything. So you could just pick up the whole Sylveon VMAX shell. I know I just opened a random Rapid Strike deck, but, like, you can just pick up the whole Sylveon VMAX shell somewhere. In Japan, this is kind of what the tier list is right now, where, like, Lost Box and Tina are both doing really well. Maridon and Mew are, like, B tier, and then Lugia drops to C tier with Darkrai. So I think Darkrai is also a card you should be picking up, um... Even though we've not seen any successful Dark Rise lists yet, I would pick up Dark Rise just because they're so, so, so cheap right now. Um, so, 
I think this is the best way to look at kind of the new format. Please follow these Twitters. I think that'd be very useful for you guys, um, especially with information. Information is the name of the game. That's kind of how you get better every single day. Um, net decking is not bad. You should net deck as often as possible just to learn why other people are doing certain things and go from there. If you don't have the time to put in, like take their testing, make it your testing, ask the right questions, that kind of stuff. I'll be trying to do some matchup guides. Um, Jeremy Gibson, a, a friend of mine, sent me a like idea for the channel. So we're going to do those sometime in the future. I need to kind of sit down and do some research and like figure out how I want to exactly do matchup guides. But um, thank you for watching as always. And please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a ton. See you guys.